Imagine Louisiana without the brown pelican. It's hard to believe that Louisiana's state bird, a symbol that has represented Louisiana even long before statehood, was once on the brink of extinction. In the 1950s and 60s, DDT was a very popular pesticide used throughout the United States. That pesticide made its way into waterways and to the fisheries in South Louisiana and bioaccumulated uh, into brown pelicans and led to a failure of, of nesting in coastal Louisiana. And so by 1963, the birds were extirpated from the state. So in 1968, a, a group of biologists uh, from the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries teamed up with biologists in Florida and began to bring birds from Florida over to Louisiana to reintroduce the brown pelican. Over the next eight years, more than 750 brown pelican chicks were relocated from Florida to Queen Bess Island near Grand Isle. The year 1971 was monumental for the brown pelican as biologists documented 11 nests which marked the first successful recolonization of the species in over a decade. We would feed them, care for them until they were able to fledge. And once the bird learns to fledge, it's going to come back to nest wherever it was successful fledging. It's a tribute to the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries for taking a chance when there wasn't a lot of data. And there's a lot of people that were involved in this reintroduction and restoration program. The furthest western population during that reintroduction effort was in Panama City. So it was going to take a lot of time in order to get that, that species to naturally colonize this area but we knew that the habitat was here. So that's why when we brought them here, we only had to do that a couple times in order to get this population going. And really it's about the habitat and maintaining these habitats out here. The majestic brown pelican growth continued to soar as the population spread across the coast and those numbers have continued to climb ever since. And today we have just as many, if not more birds than we did prior to uh, the effects of DDT in coastal Louisiana. In 2009, the brown pelican was removed from the Louisiana endangered species list. And just as the future seemed so bright, the 2010 BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill took a devastating toll on the flourishing brown pelican. The largest man-made disaster in the United States and all that oil moved us into coastal Louisiana and just like you would expect very similar to DDT those effects started showing up on brown pelicans. We were seeing brown pelicans come into the colonies oiled and then sure enough the oil came in and affected the colonies and the birds were further impacted. So there was a large effort to go out and capture these birds, rehabilitate them um, and now we are in that post oil spill world and we're starting to get some of the funding uh, from BP for those impacts. And today we're also talked about how the state is under engineering design to do a large scale restoration effort on Queen Bess Island. Much like the towns and the people of Louisiana who have bounced back after disasters, so has the brown pelican. What we have learned is that brown pelicans are a good indicator of the health of our marshes. Um, brown pelicans are a very resilient bird and given the right habitat and the right opportunity, they can and they will rebound. In 2010 in Barataria Bay, there were about five brown pelican nesting colonies. And as we stand here today, there is only one left and that is Queen Bess. And that's why it's so important for the state to get out there and restore that habitat so we can provide habitat for this bird well into the future. 
the population across the state is 80 to 100,000 brown pelicans. So this is important to sustaining their habitat. And again, it's one of three rookeries that are, that are, that are essential to maintaining that habitat. These birds are resilient just like Louisiana people. And you know what? They recognize the importance of the bird so that your children and your grandchildren will be able to enjoy the brown pelicans that you see here today. Today, it's rare to visit any coastal community and not see numbers of pelicans gathered around piers and soaring along the surf. I mean, that's part of, you know, the one of the beautiful things. It's on the state flag. It's on our state seal. Uh, you go to the beach, you can't, like, who'd never seen pelicans kind of skirting down the beach or when you go out fishing or enjoying some time on the water, you know, they're just perched on every piling there is. I mean, to have that species not part of this uh, ecosystem would just be an incredible thing. I can't even imagine what that would look like. Louisiana's state bird is more than just a feathered fish-eating coast dweller. It is a symbol of a healthy coastal habitat. It is a symbol of resilience and success. It is a symbol of culture, union, justice, confidence. It is a symbol that defines Louisiana. Ooh, another little trout. Tell you what though, it's good to see these fish are here. We're here at Queen Bess Island now, which is in the southern part of the Barataria Basin. So the Barataria Basin goes all the way from Bayou Lafourche to the Mississippi River. And it spans all of that area from Fouchon all the way to Venice, and then north towards Lafitte, and even all the way up towards Donisonville. It's a huge area of the state of Louisiana. We're here in the southern part of it, Queen Bess Island biggest pelican rookery in the state of Louisiana, and the state, the Coastal Protection Restoration Authority, using money from the oil spill, from the penalties, is gonna come out and restore this island to make sure that it's a viable nesting ground for all of these pelicans and the other seabirds that you see back here. But this is one of the most important places in the state for our state bird, the brown pelican. of trying to get this together and get it going was really at a point where we had to make a move. And, and the governor's support and him getting us all together and saying, guys, we need to get it on the ground. And, and that's what has made this happen. And that's the awesome part about it. I know it's a special effort to get out here uh, and to see so many people who, who came out today. Not, quite often we talk about partnerships and we always mean it, but it's not always so evident. Uh, but today, everybody who is here has been a partner in, in making this project uh, the success that it is and that it's going to be going forward. This island certainly looks much better today than it did just a few months ago. Queen Bess, in many ways, symbolizes coastal Louisiana. We have faced adversity and we will persevere in defending our coast. And it is my absolute pleasure to be here with you today to reopen this island and to help welcome the brown pelican and all the other birds of our coast to rely on these critical acres in the Gulf back home to Queen Bess. This island had actually deteriorated to about five acres as a result of saltwater intrusion, erosion, subsidence, sea level rise, and as a result of the money from the BP oil spill settlement, uh, which was earmarked for about $18.7 million for this specific project. We were able to take sediment out of the Mississippi River, put it on a barge, transport it here to Queen Bess Island, and then we have uh, various dredges that are actually pumping that sediment in place to restore this island so it was down to five acres and we were able to, up to restore this island up to 36 acres now. So critical habitat for migratory birds as well as overall restoration protection for this area. 
We're here in early February. We're two weeks away from the end of construction on this island, which took it from five acres of pelican habitat all the way up to 36 acres. This place is important. It breaks up wave action. It's a great place for pelicans to come and nest. It's a big investment being made with oil spill penalty monies. This island 10 years ago was covered in oil. It became a toxic place for pelicans and fish. Now, because of the investment of those oil spill penalties, we're here on a place that's gonna be great pelican habitat, great fisheries habitat for decades to come. Well, first of all, the work in order to protect our coast is critically important because we have two and a half million people living and working along the coast. But this is a direct source of jobs for many of those people and people from elsewhere in the state of Louisiana as well. And by the way, these, these opportunities are gonna be available for decades to come. From day one, the governor has challenged us to work together as a team in order to get projects off of the drawing board and get them done. And, and so this is uh, one of the first ones that we've been able to do this on. And, and look, within 12 months, we're gonna have this done. This project is a great example of the various ways we can use the resources that come out of the Mississippi River. This sand that we're standing on here was dredged out of the bottom of the river, and it looks very much like the sand that's on our barrier islands. But this is another way that we can use the materials in the Mississippi River to rebuild coastal Louisiana. This island really kind of tells the story of the BP oil spill. This, this is an island that experienced extensive damage uh, as a result of the spill. Um, it's an island that had experienced degradation for, for many, many years, and that degradation and that damage was further exacerbated by the BP oil spill. But it also shows uh, how much we have recovered uh, and the amount of work that we've done to recover from the, the damages and the injuries that were experienced as a result of the spill. I can remember Queen Bess Island as always being a popular place to fish, but over the years, due to the coastal erosion, it was really sadly damaged. It was also affecting the population of our state bird, the brown pelican, but since the coastal restoration efforts really came through, reestablished it, and now the pelicans are back better than ever. It accounts for about 15 to 20 of their overall nesting area in coastal Louisiana. So this is a very, very important project, from not only from a restoration standpoint, but also a habitat for migratory birds, particularly those uh, of the brown pelican, our state bird. A lot of money, $19 million has been invested in restoring this place, which is critical habitat for our state bird, the brown pelican, and a great place to come catch a speckled trout. Queen Bess is such a popular spot to fish around Grand Isle, a lot of it because it's so close. It is so close to, to, to the island itself that people don't have to travel far to get it. But what keeps bringing them back over and over is the fact that it is just a tremendous place to fish. It's a beautiful spring day out here at Queen Bess Island near Grand Isle. We're catching speckled trout and the pelicans are enjoying it too. And not only is it a great story of conservation, but also one of restoration. Big goal is to not lose habitat. If we don't lose habitat, our fishermen are gonna have an opportunity to get out there and catch some fish. 
The restoration project here has taken this from an island that was sinking and falling apart to a place that's going to be here for three or four more decades. The elevation that they've built out here, the amount of sand that they've pumped in, and the rocks that they've put around it are going to make sure that vegetation grows here to hold the sand in place, and this place is going to be around for a long time. You've got, you've got rocks all around it. You've got oyster reefs on one side of it. It's right next to a major thoroughfare for the shrimp and pogies and everything else as they start migrating back and forth from the marsh. That actually gives you a break in that current, gives that bait and everything a place to be. A lot of times, you know, starting off early in the spring, you start fishing them with live shrimp, plastics under a car. You can, you know, you can tight line them or work them rod and reel kind of thing. Back of trial. As, as the spring goes on, you're going to find that pogies and croakers do you a whole lot better a lot of times, and you get a lot bigger fish here because we are catching more open water fish than, than your little marsh knotheads. A lot of times, a lot of times you got to adjust your efforts around queen bass because a lot it'll get crowded here. But remember what I said about the way that it breaks the major current headed to the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of times. Your schools of shrimp and all will get on the outer edges where the current meets and where that current separates and meets because of the diversion of the island. And a lot of times that's where you catch it. When you hear us talking about we're fishing under the birds and all, a lot of times it's right here in this bay around this island because it has moved the shrimp down that current bank and that's where you find them. For people that, have, that don't live here and the people, you know, our folks that come in from out of town and stuff, not only do they like seeing the pelicans, they like seeing the dolphins and stuff, and then later in the spring when the fledglings actually get out and get to going around and walking to islands and learning how to swim, they really get a lot of interest out of that. All right, so next time you come fishing at Grand Isle, stop here at Queen Bess Island and enjoy our state bird and catch a few fish while you're at it. In this fiscal year alone, we will, for the first time in the history of the Coastal Program, we will hit that $1 billion benchmark uh, for annual allocations. We've got more hurricane protection and coastal restoration projects under construction right now than we ever have in the history of the state. Um, so real progress is being made uh, for the people who live and work across coastal Louisiana. Now we're out here, a very innovative project, which has taken sediment, dredged from the Mississippi River, which is about 30 miles to our east, put in a barge, pumped out here and shaped on this island. Pretty soon there'll be vegetation growing all over here, the pelicans will be back building their nests, and the fishermen will be out here catching fish.